good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. Joining me in the studio is Dr. Klaas Ulrich, a skin cancer specialist from the Charité Clinic here in Berlin. Hello and welcome to the show. We just saw in the report that relatively young people can also contract skin cancer. Which groups are most in danger? Well, of course, it is mostly the fair skin population. Um, but of course, also those who are already had a lot of um, UV exposure in their life, that's the LEDs, or so those who live in the sunny uh, environmentals like Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, or even the central um, area of um, the um, Mediterranean. And of course, everybody who is, so, so to say, defenseless, immunosuppressed. And what about people with darker skin tones? Are they prone to skin cancer and can they even get some skin cancer? They can develop skin cancer, but that is very, very rare. In black people from the Central Africa area, for example, melanoma is only very, very rarely found on the palms and soles, which are not pigmented. Mm -hmm. and, and what changes in the skin can indicate possible cancer? When do we need to see a doctor? Well, for the uh, non-melanoma skin cancer, that is a little sandpaper-type feeding or little papules or patches. In the black skin cancer, the mel mel melanoma, you should recognize any change of the pigment from brownish to blackish, from whitenish to reddish, uh, and then uh, ask the uh, skin cancer specialist for advice. And are there any special signs I can, I can uh, use for myself to say oh, perhaps it's a cancer? Well, there's a very interesting role called the ugly duckling role from the fairy tale with the ugly duckling. Um, in this fairy tale, all the ducklings were yellowish and the black one was the one which was not liked. And uh, if that translates to what you find on your skin is if you have a lot of black moles, the uh, reddish or the softer colored ones are the most uh, dangerous ones and vice versa. So it's more like the exception to the rule when Absolutely. it comes to the molds. Yeah. We got a viewer question from Sheila. Margot Bachholz wants to know, she spent a lot of time tanning when she was very young and, and she didn't get a sunburn. But now, in her older days, she's 64, she got some, some red uh, spots on her face and, and, and some rough patches. So could this be a problem? Should she be concerned? It sounds a little bit like uh, as she would suffer from actinic keratosis, which is an early precursor of a squamous cell carcinoma. So sooner or later, that can become dangerous for her and she should seek advice um, with, with their dermatologist for a field therapy. Okay, good. And Sakia Khan from Pakistan wants to know um, if the sun is uh, dangerous to the skin all over the day or if there's some safe period, say in the early morning or at, at nighttime, and where the sun is not so strong. Well, the worst is the midday sun because that is extremely rich in ultraviolet radiation of the B type. Um, before 11 in the morning and after 3 to 4 in the afternoon, the sun is much less Uh, dangerous in terms of skin cancer development or sunburns. Dr. Ulrich, the skin's got a natural protection system, but when do I need to use sunblock? Well, whenever you, the challenges for the skin would be too big for its natural defense. That means if you go to more sunny environmental or if you go out for mountaineering a tour on the weekend or for sailing or water sports, you should uh, consider additional sun blocking for your skin. Just helping a bit then. Yeah. yeah. So White Books from Pakistan wants to know um, what about the SPF, the protection factor, like 18, 16 and 14. What, what do they mean? Well, the SPF grades uh, sunscreen or sun protection and basically tells you uh, in which um, time frame the um, sunburn individually is delayed compared to a milder or a softer version of the sun protection. Mm -hmm. So, and, and can you even use those sunblocks uh, to get your skin a little bit lighter? Um, Nilutpat Kamaka from India wants to know this. What are the measures you can take so that our skin doesn't uh, turn dark under the skin? Yeah, Photo blocking or sun blocking is a very popular thing to get your skin whiter and softer and is as such used in Asia. But then you should also consider to mind the midday sun completely, use a hat and textile photo protection. Okay, so and, and if I take a sunblock, um, how long can I stay in the sun with maximum protection? So if I use the biggest SPF I can, I can think of. 
Well, basically, um, it depends a little bit on what part of the world you are, because even the 100% block leaves through a couple of UV uh, rays. Um, so that is in a very individual thing. But nevertheless, don't or never abuse photo protection in order to spend all the day in the sun. That is definitely the wrong thing. And it doesn't help if I just repetitively cream myself with the, with, with the block. Well, that it, it puts on additional protection, but you never have a 100% shield. And what about zinc in those sunblock? Um, we got a viewer question by Brinkhaus from Uruguay wants to know, is zinc oxide and sun cream a health risk in itself? Well, um, sun protection or photo protection started with zinc or titanium. So that is a relatively safe and old-fashioned uh, um, photo protection. It is safe, but cosmetically um, not so nice for most of the people because they are afraid of this whitening effect of old fashionable sunscreens. Because they look pale. Yeah, absolutely. And not tent at all. Yeah. Right. In Asia, this is very much like, but in Europe, we like to have transparent photo protection. All right. And, and are there any alternatives to those sunblock techniques, like textile things? Yeah, I think textiles are should come before um, additional photo protection is creamed on. So a head, uh, a long-sleeved shirt or a long trouser, that is basically the pillars of photo protection. And then the sun-wise behavior, mind the lunchtime sun. Uh, and the photo protection which you cream on comes on top. And is the color of the of the textile um, protection important? Use more black things like white things? Or well, black partly is better than white, but most important is the fabric of the of the um, of the textile. So if you if you have a thicker one or a special photo protective textile, and there's these brand new labels developed in uh, all over the world at the moment, uh, that gives you additional uh, security. Okay. And our viewer Kadri Hapoya from Estonia wants to know, are there any foods that can help protect you from the sun? Antioxidant-rich food is good for you. That means fruits um, and what we call here the Mediterranean um, diet. That means right. tomatoes, paprika, peppers and these things. So it's more like a healthy diet as an add-on, but it uh, doesn't save you from taking some sunblock. Dr. Ulrich, thanks so much for being with us in the studio today. Thank you. Thank you.